All right, so last week we took a look at the Falcon and getting some of the weight off of it by taking off these little um, motor guard things that come on there. And, you know, we got rid of about 10% of the weight that was on here, given that was without the receiver, the FPV cam, but still roughly 10% is what we lost. Today, we're not going to do a weight loss mod, but what we are going to do is we're going to do, you know, like a height mod. I guess, because if you'll notice, the Falcon's composed of three layers. You have your top carbon plate, your main middle body carbon plate, and then you have your PDB here at the bottom, power distribution board. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to squeeze down the height on this a bit by taking this power distribution board and moving it on top of the carbon fiber board. And that is it. That's what we're doing today. So with that, let's get started. Now, I probably don't have all the tools here that I'm going to need to do this. Hopefully I have most of them. I don't spend more time running around the house than I do actually working on this thing. Because like most normal people, I have stuff to do as well. So let's get her started. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna actually have to um, drop down this PDB and then desolder all the ESCs from it. That way we can replace the PDB above it and then what we'll do is we'll shorten all of our ESC wires and re-solder them then. What we're also going to do is we're also going to drop off some of the unnecessary PDB wires as well as this landing gear that is not needed. I'm just going to make this easy on myself. So something that you're going to see me do right now that I'll explain is I'm actually going to remove the red and the black smaller wire. These look like 20 gauge wires from each ESC. The reason being is some ESCs have BECs or battery eliminator circuits built into them. When you see ESC that's labeled as opto, that means it does not. A five volt BEC on an, EEC, on an ESC is really for a different application than a quadcopter like if you had an rc car or maybe an rc fixed wing or something you would actually just use one esc for the outrunner motor on a wing and then the esc would actually provide five volts back to power your receiver or your flight controller or your servo so on and so forth with quadcopters because we always use a PDB or a power distribution board, we don't need our ESCs to have BECs as well. Sorry for all the acronyms. So it's kind of interesting in that A, the PDB actually had spots to solder those uh, five volt and grounds. I think that was just a design flaw as well as I mean, they go somewhere, but I really think it's just a flaw in the design, to be honest. Yeah, but um, yeah, so these white and blacks, you can actually just take them out and clean up some of your wiring, and then that should, should help you along. This one's a little bit different, and I don't really know why. It's the same ESC, so... Yeah, that's curious as well. It looks like they just removed the red on their own on this one, but then left the black. So yeah, I'm going to remove those extra wires and clean up here before really moving on. The white wire is the one you want to save, by the way, that is your signal wire. Okay. 
If you ever watch me build quads, you might actually see me do this occasionally where I'll lay down a layer of electrical tape um, before laying down the ESC. That's because carbon fiber is conductive and will actually short out your electronics. So, you know, it's just a little, little added measure of protection, not completely necessary. I actually use a adhesive foam tape as well, but you know, some things are much better safe than sorry. All right, now let's get the screws for the flight controller set. I'm actually going to be using longer screws than what's necessary just to hold down the flight controller. The reason for that is because, but well yeah, reason for that is because I actually am going to be mounting other parts on top of the PDB in our next mod or so as well. So right now I'm just planning ahead with the screws that I'm using. Something that I can't preach enough is actually having your electronics insulated from your carbon fiber. So like I mentioned earlier, carbon fiber is conductive. So I back that screw out, and that way I can put this back on, which is the foam that was originally underneath the circuit board. And actually, because of those pins right there, and I don't want to those to short out on the carbon either, I'm going to add just a small strip of tape right there just enough to cover those pins and everything else should be okay yes it it pays to insulate everything that's going to be mounted on carbon fiber and that that is just speaking from experience Alright, as you're mounting your flight controller, pay attention to what way you face it because I tend to like the USB port to where I can actually reach it, but then that does mean that I need to go and adjust settings in the flight controller before flying. Otherwise, it thinks it's facing a different direction and doesn't want to fly. These nuts that I'm using right here, they are nylon. They are not metal. A little bit better for electronics because then you're not shorting out anything um, and you're actually insulating everything from each other but they do not react well to being over tightened so I typically hand tighten them only and I can actually strip them out with my hands as well so you know I I like using them for electronics but I don't like using them for how easy it is to strip them out. All right, now that that is done, let's get you mounted. So basically what we are going to do is instead of mounting the PDB underneath, we're going to mount it in the middle on top of the carbon fiber. Then we will use these and go ahead and drive the screws through. Actually, that's why I brought these longer screws and drive the screws all the way through. So, carbon fiber, uh, PVD. Now what you are going to lose is you are going to lose that middle front screw unless you want to drill a hole through your PDB. I don't, not something that sounds fun or like a great idea. So I am just going to suffer without it and only using the four, four post. If you need help getting these little inserts out, there's actually a Allen key made for them. And so you can just use that to kind of back them out. All right, now on 
into mounting the ESCs. shortened and and put back together and whatnot uh let's just get the top pack top back on because i still have a little bit of other work to do as well before she flies again so for now we'll just do those things now these little foam landing feet I did get these from Banggood and um, I honestly would not have bought them however I had a set given to me from a friend who bought them from Banggood and I will be damned if they weren't the toughest little foam feet that I have ever gotten because typically I've never bought any I just get them with whatever frame they come with and they don't last worth a crap these guys that I put on my main quad, they lasted longer than the frame did, which is really saying something because that's a pretty tough frame and it went through a lot. And I typically do land as well. Um, I crash, but I land more often than I crash. So yes, I would recommend these little foam feet. Apparently they really do use 3M tape on them. They are good quality and they do kick butt. So yes. That is it, that is the mod. And this thing is looking more and more like a regular quad instead of like a tiny little skyscraper all the time. So yeah, with that, I got rid of my 3D printed landing feet and PDB, you know, mount, cause it helped keep the, the board straight. As well as we got rid of a lot of extraneous wire as well. Probably at least a couple grams width worth, I would say. A little bit of hardware too. So let's get a couple quick measurements. All this wire right here equates to six grams. Then we did lose some hardware as well. Right now we are sitting at 273 grams. So that means that we lost another 20 grams worth of hardware. So this was originally 325, removing the motor guards got us a little under 300. This got us even lighter. We are now sitting at 274. Uh, again, that's not without VTX or receiver FPV cam. However, we will figure that out momentarily. So yeah, hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you kind of saw how it was done. Uh, what other things were needed? What other things were needed? Oh, maybe some new screws to mount the FC. Um, if you're interested in the kit of the nylon screws that I used, I will put a link to those in the description below. And besides that, thank you for watching. Um, depending on when this comes out, because I don't believe I'll be able to get it out today, you may already be into the February giveaway. Regardless, look in the description below. There should be a link to whether it's January's giveaway or February's giveaway. Always got to have something going on. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Lazy PC. You guys have a good day. Thank you.